Ladies and gentlemen, since apparently there are a couple of dudes listening to the show. Hey, Jacob, what's going on with your money? Are you using a proven plan or are you shooting from the hip? Are the people around you influencing you forward or are they holding you back? about your career, your profession. Do you know how you're going to level up, start making a little more money? We like to talk about these things. We like to talk about relationships, women, money, careers, and Jesus here on the Katie Hire Show. And we like to have fun while we do it. And guys, I am so excited for this episode, for the show, for the timing of the show, for all of it, because it is still the beginning of the year, and I love the new year. I'm one of those goal-setting weirdos. I like talking about anticipation and what's possible and what we can all achieve if we just work on it hard enough. I love this time of year. It's so much fun. And in integral to that conversation is talking about money, of course. And of course, key to our show is the muse of the show, the Proverbs 31 woman. Yes, she's a great housewife. Everybody knows that. Everybody can imagine the apron, the beautiful cakes she makes. But did you know she also has employees and a business and real estate and investments? This plucky heroine is also a rock star with money. So I like to look at her as an example for some of the wisdom that we can learn. She and her husband have a fantastic relationship in the scriptures. And of course, faith is the most important part of her life. So we have a lot to learn from her. Without further ado, let's jump into the Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31, 12, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. All the days of her life, she does good and not evil. How can we do good and not evil all the days of our lives? That is such an important, deep question. One that we should consider seriously. One that goes outside the bounds of this show. Let's look at this question from a financial lens. How can we use what God has asked us to steward, to manage? How can we use it for God, for our community, for our family, for our legacy, for our church, for good and not evil all the days of our lives? It's a good question. And we need a plan that will take us from wandering around to action oriented we need a plan that will help us go from being apart to being together. And we need a plan that will help us stop living for ourselves. Sometimes money is all about me, 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 me. I want to talk about me. That was my mom's favorite song a long time ago. <laughs> Toby Keith. We need a plan that takes us from talking about ourselves when it comes to money to serving others. How do we do that? And how do we find a plan that is proven that other people, millions of other people have used instead of using a plan that someone just threw out there into the marketplace and we're the guinea pig on? Not to fear, because today we're going to talk about the the baby steps. Dave Ramsey's baby steps. They are seven simple steps that you can take toward financial peace. Because we are all earning an income and then what happens to it? It's like water running through our fingers. I wanna stop now and show you an illustration, tell you a story. This is a tin can. Cranberry sauce. I did not have the opportunity to eat this Thanksgiving, sadly. Did you know the can was made 50 years earlier than the can opener? They could can it, but they couldn't get it out of the can. 
Not easily, anyway. You had to have a pickaxe to get your stuff out of the can. This little trivia from history, to me, is such an interesting way of thinking about what happens with a lot of us and our money. We make money, and then we don't know how to unlock it and make it work. We don't know how to open the can. We need somebody to give us a can opener, a way to unleash the resources where they're supposed to go. That's the baby steps. And we're going to walk through them in depth on the show today. First, I'm going to go over what the seven are really briefly so you can track with me. After that, we will come around and we will go into a little deeper dive on each so you can really understand how the plan fits together and how you can work it. Seven baby steps, super simple. Number one, save $1,000. This is your starter emergency fund. Baby step one is save $1,000. Baby step two, pay off all your debt using the debt snowball method. Pay off all your debt, accept your house, and as fast as you possibly can. That's baby step two. Baby step three, save three to six months of expenses in your fully funded emergency fund. Three to six months of expenses in the bank. This is your real emergency fund. Baby step three. Baby step four. Invest 15% woo, into retirement. We are talking about wealth building now. We're finally talking about the future. Baby step four, investing 15% into retirement. Baby step five. If you have kids, save for your kids college. This is very different for every couple because kids are very different. Colleges are very different. Plans are very different. But baby step five is save something for kids college. Baby step six, pay off your home early. Wouldn't it be nice to one day no longer have a mortgage payment? That is going to be a major, major just unleashing of your finances when you no longer have a mortgage payment and you own that home free and clear. Baby step six is pay off your home early. That leaves just one more step. Build wealth and give it away. Dave Ramsey likes to call it outrageous generosity. Give so much that people just oh, stand there guffawed. Oh, how could you, how could you tip the bill? That's crazy. It's not so crazy. You can do it. I happen to know a number of baby step seven people. Hey, Portia. <laughs> hey, Monique. Hey, Alyssa. Lots of people. And they're not 90 years old. You can do this at almost any age. The earlier that you start, of course, the sooner you'll get there. I feel like that's a Yogi Berra-ism. So let's track back. Baby step number one. $1,000 in the bank. Also as fast as you possibly can. $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Now, there are a lot of ways you could scratch together $1,000. Goodbye, Netflix. Goodbye, Hulu. Goodbye, monthly Amazon subscriptions. Simply cut out all of the fluff you don't need in your life, and you will probably find that you are just leaking money <clears throat> that you could use instead to go towards your emergency fund, your baby emergency fund. Why $1,000? Why start with a little bit of savings instead of just going straight toward tackling the debt or straight toward investing? You need a little buffer in your life. This is the reason we save first. You need a little space between you and splat. When something happens, two falls ago, I had to replace all four tires on my car twice in the span of about two weeks. That was frustrating, but it wasn't a crisis because we had an emergency fund. Now, another thing to note, when we were in baby step two, you heard me mention earlier, that's pay off all your debts using the snowball. 
the debt snowball method, except for your house, you have a thousand dollars in the bank. And we were in baby step two for five to seven years. And we never went over the thousand dollars. So sometimes people say, I couldn't possibly have just a thousand dollars in the bank. That's all you need because you also have an income. So if an emergency happens, like you have to replace all the tires on your car or somebody breaks a leg or you have to patch a hole in the roof because a tree falls on it or something, you can use what you have saved in your emergency fund and your regular income to fix that emergency. So Dave and I's experience was for five, seven years, we had a thousand dollars in the bank and everything else went to debts. So you can do it too. Baby step two, pay off all your debt, except for the house using what's called the debt snowball method. This step is so hard, but this step is so, so good. Y'all debt is a thief. I think Rachel Cruz says that debt is a thief. It steals your income. Steals from your tomorrow to pay for your, your yesterday. Chances are you never needed it in the first place. You were buying something to impress someone you didn't like, and you probably didn't even know, <laughs> and you didn't need it. You probably didn't even want it. Baby step two is where you cut up the credit cards. You stop borrowing from anybody, anywhere, your mama, your friends, you don't borrow anything anymore. It's a piece of the past. You pay off your car, you pay off the HELOC, you pay off that payday loan, you pay off that 401k advance, you pay it all off. And then all of a sudden your bills are clean. You don't owe anybody anything. Can you just imagine that? makes me breathe easy just thinking about it. We had to pay off $154,000 of student loans. And that was ridiculous to think about how we're little old we ever going to do that. We started out making, I made $35,000. He worked at Starbucks. How are we going to pay off six figures? You use the debt snowball method. The debt snowball method is where you start with the smallest debt, the small one, the $35 late bill, that $125 Verizon bill, whatever that late bill, that debt is, you start with the smallest one and you pay it off and it's gone. No longer, in, uh, <clears throat> no longer accruing interest no longer waiting to take your dollars, you now take that little payment that you were spending and you put it toward the next bigger one. And now you use all your income that you can, that you can free up and you throw it on that next smallest debt. And then a couple weeks, a month, whoosh, the small one's gone. Now you have two payments you are no longer paying out that you can use that freed up money on the third the third payment, the third debt, plus all your income you've freed up. And slowly, and then faster and faster and faster, the amount that you can put on your debt grows and grows and grows. So you stay motivated, you really get traction, and you stay focused. We didn't focus on the $154,000 of student loans we owed. We focused on the small one. The little disbursements. Okay, it's only $1,000 we're working on. Okay, it's $1,200. All right, the next one is $1,450. Okay, we're doing a $2,100 one. On and on and on and on. We just focused on the little one and we were able to track with it. Do it as fast as you possibly can. The faster you get out, the better. The more likely you will get out. You can do it. Baby step three. Save three to six months in your fully funded emergency fund. Make the piggy bank happy. Three to six months, if you had the amount that you normally need to spend in bills, in three to six months, 
what does that look like? $20,000 in the bank? Could you handle it if you got laid off? If you had 15 grand or $30,000 in the bank, could you handle it if somebody had a pregnancy and they didn't have any maternity leave or if somebody got sick or if you needed to take care of your parents and you had to leave the workforce temporarily? Well, if you don't have any debt, you have no payments, and you're entirely in control of your income, you can take what you were spending on payments and you can pay yourself in a savings account and you can build up three to six months of expenses. Why three to six months? Well, everybody's got that sweet spot, right? But if you're saving one month of expenses, that's just not quite enough. And if you're saving two years worth of expenses, that's just a little bit extreme. So three to six months is the sweet spot. And trust me, once you get out of debt, it is so easy to do. It's so easy to imagine. It's still hard work. A lot of people say this one is a really hard step because you're not paying something off. You don't have the motivation of killing the little debt. But this one gives you such a huge, wonderful peace of mind. Baby step four, tracking right along. 15% to retirement. Aha, we are no longer cleaning up our mess. We are now looking toward the future. 15% to retirement. This is in your 401k. Maybe it's in a 403b, your Roth IRA. These are your tax advantaged retirement accounts. 15%. That's the step we're on right now, by the way. Baby step five, save for your kids' college. This looks really different for different people, right? How many kids do you have? How old are your children? What kind of college choice will you be making? All these decisions mean the total that you will end up paying for their tuition will vary wildly. That's why there's no specific percentage on this on this baby step, that's why there's no specific number. It's just you and your family be intentional about what it takes to help set your kid up right when they leave the nest. Some people choose not to pay anything for their children's ch uh, college. Some people are unable to. All of those are fine options as long as they are done with intentionality and on a plan. Not because you just decided one day, I forgot to prepare for you. As somebody who signed every document that came my way just because I didn't know any better, it will be a huge blessing for your children to start out their lives as adults without the millstone of debt around their necks. It's just such a generous thing to do too, you know? Wow. Baby step six, pay off your home early. And doesn't that sound good? Dave Ramsey, America's financial guru, he talks a lot about how different your home feels when you own it free and clear. You go out in the backyard and you take your socks off and you stand in the grass. You curl your toes up in the grass. You think, this is my grass. This is not the banks. This is my grass. The average millionaire pays off their home in 10.2 years. That's not long at all. 30 year mortgage, that sounds like a long time. But just 10.2 years, you can imagine that. And when you have no payments, when you have an emergency fund to weather the storm, when you've taken care of your kids' college and retirement is on, is on lock, you can throw extra to your mortgage. You can, in, you can intentionally work toward paying that off early. And man, once you do that, you are in baby step seven. This is the one where you build wealth and you give it all away. I think people really are generous Sometimes their financial situations just 
stop them from being able to act on that generosity. I had a friend at a workplace who went through a terrible family trauma and I had nothing to give her. I couldn't handle my own, Dave and I's, we couldn't handle our own monthly minimums. So I had nothing extra left to give her. And I just cried thinking I couldn't even help my friend. My debt had stopped me from being able to be generous when she was going through this family trauma. Baby step seven, build wealth and give. This plan helps you organize your life around living for someone else and not just yourself. Live for the future and work toward something instead of paying the past off. I love that so much. And the steps are very, very simple. How do you implement those steps into your actual monthly plan, your blueprint, your financial roadmap, the budget? I know I said the B word again, and I will for every single episode. The budget is so important. This is the plan where you on paper put or on the app, Put down your expectations, your intentions, and then you execute. So important. In the example I use for the Katie Hire show, I put in $4,500 as the monthly income for this budget. That's because that's about the average monthly American take-home pay. So after we have our income at the top, $4,500, take off the tithe or the tenth, to charity or to church, $450. The next thing on the person who is in baby step one, on that person's budget, the next thing should be building your savings, your emergency fund. So that means we gotta look at those 41 some hundred dollars and see where we can pull to get $1,000. Under the food section, that is always a great place to look because, man, we just eat our money all the time. When you go in and your bank and you and your spouse or you and your friends do a little self-audit and look at your bank accounts for the first time, you will be stunned at how tasteless your money suddenly is when you realize you spent it all on Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell or Sonic. (laughs) You will see that It's probably true for you what is very true, very common for a lot of people, which is we spend a lot of money on food, eating out, not being intentional about planning ahead. So we'll just grab something quick at work. That is a great way to bleed money. So in this example, we have $700 for groceries and $300 for restaurants. We're going to take those restaurants down to zero because if you're in debt and you or you don't have any savings to your name, there's no space between you and life. You are just a trip away from a crisis. If you tripped and chipped a tooth the day before an interview and you had no money to pay for the dentist, what would you do? You'd probably put on a credit card or care credit or go into debt some other way. Wow, that's such a specific example, Katie. Where did that example come from? That happened to me when I was in college. Dave and I were married. I bit my nails and a 10-year-old tooth filling on the front of my tooth came right off. Just I had an interview the very next day and all of a sudden I had this terrible (laughs) dental emergency. There were tears. I was mad. I swore I'll never chew my stupid fingernails again. But we had no buffer. So, man, it took a little while to pay that stupid tooth off. Don't be like me. Don't chew your nails. Do have an emergency fund. So when you're building that emergency fund, that $1,000, you are not going to restaurants. Oh, I have date night built in here at $120 a month. That's not happening when you're building your emergency fund. You need freedom. You need security. You need buffer more than you need to grab food and come home and eat and binge Netflix because what kind of date nights can you do during a pandemic anyway? Anniversary trip? That's gone. 
zero dollars. Fun stuff with kids? Uh, try all those games you have in the closet already. Try the trampoline in the background. Try a free hike. Try going to the park. There are a lot of things you can do that are free. Oh, spending money. Let's get rid of that. Okay, you're going to spend something, so I'll put it on 20 bucks a person. 20. Look at that. I just adjusted our spending money. I adjusted our food budget, our date night, and all of the sudden, $1,000 left the budget. So you go right back up to your emergency fund line and you fill it in, $1,000. Then you go and you move your money out of your checking account and into a savings account. You do not want to accidentally spend baby step one. Some people prefer to keep their baby step one in cash. That way they can't accidentally use it online. I don't mind how you do it. As long as you know, this thousand dollars is for emergencies, true emergencies only. Doesn't have to be hard. You can do it. That budget will help you. It will help you go from paying off yesterday, stealing from tomorrow to building wealth and giving it all away, being outrageously generous. Let's move on to our tribe question. Our tribe question for this episode is, if I'm already putting money into retirement at work, I'm done with baby step four. Can I go back now and work on baby step two? This is a great question because it shows how often we sometimes think that the baby steps, the seven baby steps are a to-do list at any time. Oh, I'll do step number three today, and then tomorrow I'll do step number six, and then the day after that I'll do step number one. It is not a to-do list that you can check off in any order. The baby steps is a process. You have to do them one by one. It's more like a recipe, a construction plan. You have to do the foundational work first of getting buffer between you and life. You have to get out of debt next. If you don't get out of debt next, the debt is gonna be stealing your wealth building tool, your income, and you'll never be able to get those three to six months of expenses, and you'll never have the margin for the 15%. Each of the steps builds on the previous one. So do them all in order. Great question. If you want to leave a question, just shoot an email to katiehireshow at gmail.com. Or if you'd like more help on the baby steps or putting your budget together, go to the website and find the show notes. It's really easy. It's right at the top. You can click on the menu and you can get a downloadable guide to the baby steps in the show notes for this episode. That's it. Keep killing it with your New Year's goals. Rock the budget and let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on with your money. Yeah.